Happy Resurrection Sunday, everybody. You know, I was, I was speaking to uh, Andre and I called myself, I said, you know, Happy Easter. And then instantly my spirit was kind of like, no, Happy Resurrection. Amen. Uh, if you can play, that's awesome, beautiful. Man, it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful day. You know, whenever he was um, sharing, um, I was reminded, um, well, uh, the gospel of Mark, he, he, he records, you know, the first evangelist, you know, um, Mary Magdalene, she was, she was a woman who was dev- devil-possessed. She had seven demons, and God used her. The messenger revealed the reality that our Savior who who died for humanity is no longer dead, he's alive. You know, th- think about who he used. Think about who he used. And so I, I, I grabbed my Bible and I, and I opened it and I, and I backtracked a few verses and it says in, in Mark 16 verses, verses 6, well, let me read verse 5 to give a bit of context and, and enter in the tomb. They saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side and they were, were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. What a good message this Easter, this resurrection season. Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified, but he is risen. He's not here. He's not here. See the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples and go and tell Peter, specifically, go and tell Peter that he is, he's going before you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he said to you. Peter, the man who denied Jesus three times, who failed and failed and failed again, and felt disqualified to ever being used by God. A woman who was, di- who was controlled, filled with devils. People say, man, that person's so mean, is filled with anger, filled with you know, all kinds of bad thoughts. I'm, t- I'm telling you what, God knows how to empty your cup and fill it up afresh. I don't know what you came in here carrying. I don't know what you're full of today. But he can clean you out and he can fill you up and he can use you. What is it that the devil's been whispering in your, in your ear over and over and over again that oh, you've disqualified? You can never be, you can never raise your family, you can never be a blessing to, to society, you can never do anything good, anything worth talking about. What is it that the enemy's been whispering in your ear? I just want to nullify that now today in the name of Jesus. And say, don't be, don't, be, don't, don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. You've not screwed it up that bad that His mercy can't rescue you. I, I, love, I, love, I love Paul and how he wrote concerning the, the love of God. He said, the love is so wide. It's, it's so wide that no matter how far you go, it will find you. It's so long that it, it will go after you and it, it, it will keep on chasing you, keep on going after you. That's how long His love is. It will never quit on you. It's not human love. It's not love that disappoints, you know. You know, people leave. People dis- rearrange on you. They, people say they're going to do stuff and, and they don't. You know, busted families. People getting divorces. People failing one another, saying they're going to do one thing and do the opposite. But God is consistent. He loves and he keeps on loving. And Paul said his love is not only wide and long, but it's it's deep. And it's high. It's so high that he'll overlook your mistakes. It's so deep that no matter how far deep in sin you have fallen, his love finds you and goes right down to the to the pit of shame and guilt. There was a woman in the Bible who she was caught in the very act of adultery. And all these, you know, self-righteous people had r- rocks in their hand and they're, they're, re- they're ready to stone her. Because according to the law, they, they, they thought they had a right. And Jesus saw a woman on her own in the dirt and he, he refused. I refuse you 
to be the only one down there in that, 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 that state. I'm going right down to where you are. He goes right down to the depths of where you are. That's what Jesus did. Our king came to right where I was to pick us up, take us home. It's beautiful. Don't be alarmed. I said, don't be alarmed. I'm going to read uh, Luke's gospel. I believe I've got a message for us. Woo, my, my, my. In Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 19, it says in verses 28, and when he had said, to, said this, he went on ahead and going up to Jerusalem. This is, of course, when he came into, um, you know, Jerusalem. This is often the passage that people preach last week in Palm Sunday. Uh, the, the triumphant entrance into, into Jerusalem. We can, we can read on and, and see that um, he, he sent two of his disciples in verses 30 saying, go into the village opposite you. Where, whereas you enter, you will find a colt there, a donkey tied up on which no one has ever sat. You know, apparently, you know, uh, Jesus likes, you know, new, new vehicles. You know, everyone like the smell of fresh new leather, brand new cars, you know, vehicles. Anyway, Jesus said, um, loose this never sat on before donkey. Loose it. Bring it to me. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? This you shall say to him because the Lord has need of it. The Lord has need of it. You know, I was reminded when I was reading this, I was reminded of a, a preacher. His, his name is R.W. Shambok, uh, a great, you know, a healing revivalist, you know, a great, uh, you know, preacher. And, um, you know, could preach up a storm. And any, anyhow, you know, he, he felt led to go to a certain city and, and to go and minister. And no church partnered with him to, um, you know, uh, let him use their facility in their building. And so he, he drove around and said, Lord, you sent me here. And no one's partnering. No one's giving me a building to use and so lead me what what building should i should i acquire and so he drove around the spirit of god said hey that's your building and um and so it had a big for sale sign outside so do you know what this man man of god did he he got a hold of the four he, he went around it praying twice he walked around the property twice and then he he ripped up the for sale sign from outside the property went to the uh, estate agents and put the sign on the desk of the estate agents and said, what is, my, what is your sign doing on my property? And they looked at him confused. It was a Jewish you know, property firm. They said, that's our sign and that's our property. What are you doing? You, you need to go back and replace it. He said, no, no, God said that's my building. He has need of this. He has need of this. He said, so the, the real estate agent, the, the owner came out, a Jewish man, businessman. He said, he said, listen, it could be your property if you uh, put your best foot forward and give us a deal that we can't refuse. He said, no, it's my property. God says he needs it. And so, um, and then he just left his details and walked off. For two weeks, the business owner, he couldn't get R.W. Shambok off his mind. And they were doing their tax returns and everything else. And then something just came in his heart and, and, and told the business owner, consider that property as a, as a tax write-off and give it as a charitable donation to that man who walked in your office two weeks ago. How many know, you know, more assets, more, there's a play on words, more assets, uh, donkey, will be loosed for, for the kingdom. Come on, you're a hard crowd. This, come on, it's Resurrection Sunday. Some people liked it, you know. Some people think it. I believe more and more business people will 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 lose their their properties and their assets for the kingdom because he has need of it. Amen. He has need of it. What is it that that you need to take possession of that he needs you to have in order to fulfill what God has called you to do? Amen. And so, verses 34, it says, And they said, The Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes 
on the colt, on the donkey, and set Jesus on. And as they went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then as he was now drawing near to the descent of the Mount of Olive, uh, Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise him and rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Who's believing for mighty works? Who's seen some mighty things? Come on, you know it. You already have seen some mighty things. If it wasn't for the goodness of God, you would be in a prison cell somewhere. Amen. If it wasn't for the goodness of God, you would have been many, many feet under, underground right now in a, in, a, in a coffin. If it wasn't for the goodness of God, I'm telling you, you, would have, you wouldn't have the wife, the family, the kids. The, come on, if it wasn't for God's goodness, you've seen some good things. But there's, there, is, there is more. And they were praising him. Notice what they're taking their jackets off, laying it on the, on the road. Not for Jesus to walk on. Jesus was walk, not walking into town. For a donkey to walk upon. Who would do that with your jacket? I mean, this is quite a nice jacket, you know. For G- From observation, whenever and wherever Jesus enters, people so moved to praise in radical ways. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glorious gl- glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke them. Rebuke your disciples. And he said to them, I tell you, because they didn't like it. They didn't like this exuberant praising. He said to them, I tell you, that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Come on, somebody. He didn't say, you know, the rolling stones will start singing. No, no, no. The physical stones. You were created to praise Him. This was Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And um, like I said, it seems wherever Jesus makes an entrance, things happen. Things happen. After Jesus' resurrection, we know from Acts, if you can put it up on the screen, Acts chapter 1, verses 3, uh, Jesus showed himself, showed himself, revealed himself, to his disciples with, the Bible says, with many infallible proofs. With many infallible proofs. His, his, his disciples were in a, ro- a locked room and in a locked room and suddenly Jesus entered this locked room. How many know that, that will clear your sinuses real fast? Locked room and suddenly Jesus walked straight through the wall. I'm just wanting to get somewhere here. When Jesus walked into Jerusalem, amazing things started. People started crying out. The entrance demanded exuberant praise. When when he stepped into that that space where where the disciples were, were in, infallible proofs, amazing things happened. What about Jesus' triumphant, entrance into into heaven when all of heaven and the host of the angels he's home he's come with his own blood to obtain your eternal redemption and angels cried out they had jackets they too would have put them out holy Mission accomplished. Holy, holy, holy. The job has, he did it. He was sent and he came back victorious. With his own blood, he came and applied his own blood on the instruments of worship, on the mercy seat, so that you and I could accept mercy. 
when Jesus comes in, amazing things happen. I said amazing. Amazing things happen. Woo. And the father cried out, the psalmist David says in Psalm 110 verse 1, he cried out, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So I'll make all enemies your footstool. The last enemy that will be defeated is death itself. Spiritual death is being dealt with. Soon we're going to get a resurrection, bo- re- resurrected body. How many know I'm taking this body, but this body glorified into heaven? It's awesome. He entered the, the town of Jerusalem. Amazing things happened. He entered the room. Infallible proofs, supernatural things. People were in awe. Their faith was fortified. He went into heaven and obtained eternal redemption. Eternal redemption. His blood is the guarantee. I guarantee to you that the covenant, the new covenant of the New Testament will work. Hallelujah. This is in Revelation chapter 12 verse 7. From the Phillips translation, it says war broke out in heaven. It goes on to say that the dragon and his angels fought back, but they did not prevail. And they were expelled from heaven. So the huge dragon, the serpent of ancient times who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver, deceiver of the whole world, was hurled down upon the earth and his angels were hurled down. The fallen angels were hurled down with him. Satan arose in heaven to make war but he prevailed not we are seated at the right hand of the father in a place where Satan cannot prevail that's where you've been relocated in a position where Satan cannot prevail against your body your mind your family your your finances he cannot prevail because of the victory we celebrate today of what Jesus obtained in heaven for you and I. Seated where sin has no ability. There's a, he has an inability, inability to prevail. And here we are, we've been given the name that is above every other name. The name of Jesus. Blood that protects and washes us clean, whiter than snow. He's given us angels to keep charge, to keep us on the, the straight and narrow. Come on now. They're sent to minister for us. For us. We've been given the word that is sharper than any two-edged sword. We've been, we, we have mighty weapons. Mighty weapons. It's quick. It's powerful. It'll quicken you. Oh, Hallelujah. We've been given the mighty third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. Now you have residential presence of Almighty God. His Spirit dwells in the human spirit. Bringing it back to life. Man is now a champion. Man is now a champion. Woo! I can imagine the noise in heaven. The angels and the... The singing, Ooh. how God became a man, took on human flesh, how he took on not just human flesh and became a man, but he took on and became sin. He couldn't become a sinner because he never s- sinned. He could not become and be labeled a sinner because he, he committed no sin, so he became sin. It, the sin that you committed as a sinner, Jesus became that sin. He was obedient, became obedient, even to the point, the Bible says, of death. He humbled himself. He was bruised. He was battered. He was torn for you and for me. Death thought that death had him. The grave thought that the grave could keep him. Hell thought that hell had won. But I'm telling you, on the third day, Jesus rose. 
busted out of that, that grave on the third day. Oh, praise God. Come on, help me preach. I feel like running around this church. I feel like Sharon in this place. Come on. Come on. All right. His entrance into heaven. What about his entrance into your heart? Because it, the story doesn't end there. He entered heaven, applied his blood. When his blood was accepted as pure, he purchased you. And everyone who says, yes, Lord. Everyone who says, Jesus, come into my life. Can you imagine the... the when, when Jesus comes marching in to a heart and takes possession of a heart and makes it brand new. Think about it. It was more glorious than his entrance into Jerusalem. It was more glorious than coming into an upper room, a locked space where the disciples were. It was, I'm telling you, it was glorious. Whew. This is why all of heaven, the Bible says, all of heaven rejoices over one soul. Who, why? Because it's a glorious, triumphant entrance. Because God values Jesus coming into a life more than Jesus coming into a town, a, a city like Jerusalem. Think about the noise. Think about the sound. Think about the worship. Think about the, the instruments of worship in heaven. When Jesus comes in, what happened? I believe a great announcement was made. Satan, you're evicted. Out. Out. You, you've been staying here for long enough. You've been ruling this body. You've been controlling this life from now on. They serve me. Now on, sickness, you get out. Depression, you get out. Come on, sickness, you get out. Come on, confusion, you get out. A lack of self-esteem, you get out. You just get, you're evicted. Furniture and all, everything, literature, everything. Everything you've used, everything, clear down. Clear down. All those devils came out of Mary Mag Magdalene. And what came in? Whoo, man, I'm telling you. The birth of the church, we see what happened. Peter, who was very, very timid, denied Jesus three times. When he received Christ, when he got filled with the Holy Spirit, there was a great boldness that came in. Timidity came out. What, what needs to come out of your life? I'm telling you, it doesn't belong there. What, what, don't, what, what, are you carry, what, you, what are you carrying right now that you don't want to carry anymore? Jesus, invite Jesus into your life. You watch what happens. Hallelujah. What else will it, he'll give you a new name? Really? Yeah. Did you know that you've got, an, you've got a new name? Well, what's your new name? You'll find out. I'll find out what my, my name is when I get to heaven. Did you know that? Like, your na my name is not Joel. I have a name that I will discover when I get to heaven. I, I've been given a new tongue when he comes into my life. I now speak different. Come on, somebody. I, I, I get new eyes. You get new eyes when you receive Jesus. He comes in, changes everything. Now you have a better perspective. You know, without Jesus, I was, the Bible refers to it as veiled. You can't see anything. But when you receive Jesus, when he comes in, it's suddenly you can see stuff. You can see the purpose of my life, the, the call that God has for my life. Things, things happen radically. You realize I'm not just on the earth to exist. Thank you for your overwhelming like enthusiasm. Oh, I thought I was just here to just exist. No, no, you, you're not just living your existence. You, you got something to do. Some say, some say, I've got something to do. I've got well, when you receive Jesus, when Jesus enters, he gives you a new set of spiritual eyes where you can now begin to know what it is. These days are being re reserved for you. These are the days of you. I said, these are the days of you. 
Well, hang on a minute. What about that song we, we used to sing, you know, growing up? You know, these are the days of Elijah. Listen, if you're going to sing a song like that, sing it like these are the days of Elisha because Elisha had double the annoying that Elijah did. But these aren't, these aren't the days of Elijah or Elisha. These are the days of you. Elijah is dead. Elisha is dead. Check, check on your neighbor. Make sure are they alive. If they're alive, tell them. These are the days of you. These are your days. These are my days. These are my days. Hallelujah. Come on, praise God. Then think about this. There is another entrance that, that, we, will, that we will embark upon. When, when our spirit exits our body and we slip out, our, out of our physical body, this frame that we, we all brought to church with us, because you are a spirit, you, you, live in, you live in a body, you possess a soul, amen? But imagine the, the entrance that we will all make into heaven. Oh, man. We will enter just like Jesus entered. We will enter. And, and our family and friends who, who are no longer on the earth now who are there will, will be there to, to, to greet us. And, to what? and all the friends we've made on earth what do you mean? All the people we've shared the gospel to, and because of your testimony, and because of your ministry of reconciliation, sharing Jesus, and sharing life, amen, uh, they heard about the Lord, and, and because they found out that He is the only way, that they made it through the pearly gates, and, and found their way into heaven because, and through Jesus, amen. And they will meet you, and they will say, thank you for telling me. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. You, you make friends in your your everlasting habitation. This is not your home. You have a place and you will enter and your friends will be there. More importantly, Jesus will be there. Think about it. And you'll hear these words, well done. Well done. Good. Faithful. Servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Your friends will, will say, we, we knew you would make it. We knew you would make it. We knew it. Because we saw Jesus was praying for you. He ever lives to pray that your faith wouldn't fail you. We knew you would make it. And here you are. We all made it. We're all here. All my kids are going to make it. You're getting to heaven. You're getting to heaven. You're getting to heaven. You're getting to heaven. I'm getting to heaven. We're going to make it. Come on, what about you? Is your family going to make it? Are you going to get in? And I believe they're going to shout. They're going to say, we knew you would make it. We knew you would overcome. Overcome. For all those who overcome. Woo, come on now. For all those who overcome shall enter. Not succumb, but overcome. Uh, I said not succumb to the pressures of this world, but over, over, overcome this world and everything that this world throws at us. We, we, we will overcome because faith is the victory that overcomes. Amen. Heaven belongs to overcomers. But here's the deal. You cannot, you cannot overcome. You can, you can never overcome in your own strength. There, there is a season, and I'll end on this. There's a, there's a season in Daniel's life, in Daniel chapter 10, I'll, I'll turn to a scripture in a moment, but in Daniel 10, there's a season of his life where he's giving himself to words. To words. Because he realized there's things that he's called to do in his life um, that um, he can't do in his own strength. There's things for his nation that must change and be reformed. Israel must be reformed, but he can't do it in his own strength. So he, he gives himself for a season. That season lasted for 21 days. It was a season of prayer and fasting, but he was giving himself to words. Hear me out here, because I believe there's answers for you. If you're dealing with what you're dealing with, 
situations of long continuance and you want it to change. I heard it in my spirit. There's an answer here for you to see a shift. To see a shift. Hallelujah. I was, um, we, we had a great time yesterday, you know, mini report. We had a great time yesterday, you know, sharing the gospel. We had, you know, uh, s- seven different t- teams who went out and it's awesome. Praise, praise God. And, you know, um, I, I'm yet to hear, I'm excited to hear the reports that come in. You know, we led a guy, I was with Avia, we led a guy to Christ. And another person we, we were praying for, a divine appointment who recognized me. They, they recognized me in town. So they said, God, oh, could you pray? And so I'm praying, this woman is undone by the power of the Holy Spirit. She's crying, tears are like coming off her face. And then this other guy, who's, he doesn't know me from Adam. He, he's just staring at all of this. As soon as I'm done praying, he goes, pray for me. Pray for me. Anyway, there was a guy and I thought, man, he looks like Elvis. Long sideburns, big glasses. I thought, Avia. It's Elvis. She's a bit, she likes like Elvis, you know. <laughs> he was a Pentecostal, you know. Watch the movie, you'll find out. Um, but uh, <laughs> I don't endorse everything that Elvis, you know, all his lyrics and stuff like that. But anyway, we, we went, we found El- Elvis was in the city. And so we started sharing the gospel to Elvis. And so we got, we let him chat and we built a bit of a connection. And, and, um, and he said, um, he said, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm the, I'm the real Elvis, you know. Um, the king of pop is alive. I thought, man, you couldn't have set me up even. You just set me up. I said, the king of pop? Let me tell you who the real king of pop is. He set me up to preach, preach King Jesus, you know. And so we did. We, 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 we preached King Jesus. And I said, there's only one king. And then I felt in my spirit, I thought, whoa, no. Yeah, one, there's one king of kings, you understand, but... But understand the redemption. When, when the king comes in, he then makes you a king and priest, the Bible says. And um, please put it up on the screens, Revelation chapter 1, verses, verses 6, from the King James Version. Oh, man. I've got a great sense that this... this this day is just, this, this whole season, this next whole season is just going to be victorious for you. Come on, where's the overcomers at? Overcoming. Why? Look how he's made us. He's, he and has made us kings and priests. And I felt after my encounter with Elvis, the king of pop, low, lowercase k, king, not capital K, I felt the Spirit of God literally say to me, take your place as a king. Take your place as a king. Because of the king of kings entering your heart, take your place. And I feel the Spirit of God saying that to you and me. Take your place as a king. And then on the back of what I've just said, you know, Daniel worked with words, and I'm going to show you a scripture in a minute. Kings work with words. Kings don't work with their hands. They work with their words. If a king wants a, a, a ditch dug, what do they use? Do they pick up a shovel and start digging? Tell me. Come on. They use their words. They give a command and the servants of that command dig the ditch. They work with words. Right? So you reign as a king because of what Jesus has done. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, 17, for all those who have received, you know, the, the gift of righteousness, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign. Reign as kings, reign. When, 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 we, when we die and go to heaven? No, it says in this life and in the life to come. So, so we see it, you know, uh, where's the kings at? Where's the kings at? Come on, kings and queens. Where, where's the kings? Amen. That's you and I. Work with your words. Work with your words. Because the arm of the flesh is limited. And Daniel knew it. The arm of the flesh is, is limited. Work, work with your words. Amen. There is no such thing as, 
you know, there is no word that is not important. Every word is important. In fact, the Bible says you'll have to give an account of every idle word. Every idle word. Why would there be such a um, a judgment? On the words that we say in the next life when we when we leave this place because your words are so significant in this moment in this life amen Hebrews 11 verse 3 says by faith we understand do, do we do we understand this he said, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which appear or that are visible. That which exists, he's, he's saying, it's made up. The things that you see, the things that um, you know, have been framed exist. The reason why they exist is because they've been made up of things that do not appear, unseen things. Words create what we see. Words also change what we, what we see. Hallelujah. We see um, a woman in the, um, in the gospel in, in Mar Matthew chapter 9. We know her as the woman with the issue of blood. She had that issue for many, many years. And she's desperately trying to, uh, you know, find a way of becoming well. Uh, she goes to every doctor. What is she doing? She's fighting with her hands. She spends all the money to find, try and find a cure. Um, but rather, the Bible says she grows worse. What, what is she doing? She's fighting. She's working with her hands. But what we see in her life is um, there's a shift. But from my observation, since I'm in the people business, and I, I am wrapping up, this is my last kind of like emphasis, and maybe take me a few minutes to do it, but, but I believe there's answers for you. I believe things will shift like it shifted for this woman and we're going to read a couple of verses from, from Daniel too. Something shifted in her life. She went from trying to make it happen very desperately in her own means, with her own hands. She shifted and started using her words. But as someone who's in the people business, I realize that many people are trying to think how it's going to turn and then trying to make it turn in their own strength. They're thinking how and what do I need to do to make a difference and they're doing their best in their own strength but it's really it's, it's going worse and I think many have lost sight of the fact that God has designed you divinely to, to live like a king. And to use words. Hallelujah. Matthew 9 21 says, For she said, for she, for she said. She started using her words. And then her words propelled her into action. She said, For 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 she said, If only I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And she touched the hem of his garment, her internal bleeding dried up and she, she, she was whole. She was completely whole. Amen. You've got to go to work on your kids with your words. You've got to go to work with your, on your business with your words. If you want God's hand to get there, your words have got, got to get there first before God's hand gets there. You've got to go to work on your health with your words. That's what kings do. I said, that's what, that's what kings do. Your words and your life, they match. Not because you're describing your situation, you're literally creating it with your words. The things that are seen are made and created by the things that are unseen. Words. Once again, Hebrews 11 verse 3. For by faith we understand. Do we? Do we understand? That the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things that, that we see, if you see it, it was created by unseen words. 
You cannot see words, but you can see what words create. I so said, you, you can, words create. You can't see. Can you see my words? But words create things so that you can see. Turn to Daniel chapter 10. Verse 10, it says, suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palm of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man, greatly beloved, understand the words. O Daniel, man, greatly beloved, understand the words, the words that I speak to you and stand upright for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. He said, I have now been sent to you. Well, what sent him? Well, once again, if a king wants to dig dig a ditch, what does he need to do? Pick Pick up a shovel? Send his word, which sends the laborers. Right? So his words, Daniel's words, sent this messenger. How many know you've got angels just waiting, ready? They want to help you. Amen. I've been sent to you. Why? Verse 12. Notice this. Last verse here. Then he said to me, do not be afraid, Daniel. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I have come because of your words. Because of your words, things will come. Mercy, things will come in the natural. I mean, it's already a spiritual reality because of your words. Promotions come, blessings come, relationships come. Mom, chill. He's believing for a wife. Praise the Lord. Look at him. Look at him. He's, He's really serious about this. And we are too. Money comes because of your words. Strength comes. I have come because of your words. If you don't like what's come, come knocking on your doors, and you're seeing a whole stuff that's being knocking on your door, what has your words invited to your door? By faith, we understand this. The things we see was created by the unseen words. You know, we talk about Jesus coming into a life. He comes in because of words. Someone believes in the heart and confesses with their mouth, and guess what happens? Jesus comes in because words invite. And there is an answer this Easter, and that is Jesus Jesus is the answer. And, and, and I want to encourage anybody in this room. And I'm going, to, I'm going to invite somebody, anybody who may be in this room who has never made Jesus the Lord of their life to make that commitment today and invite him to enter, to come marching in and evict all the ugliness and evict all the guilt and evict all the shame and evict all the sin and evict all of the stuff that the enemy has has brought into your life or the baggage come on anyone ever carried you know what it means to carry baggage enemy came in and just brought it all and offloaded all his ugly stuff but when Jesus comes in he cleans it out he cleans it out I said he cleans it out never to be the same again yeah, but I've been trying. That's the problem. You've been working with your hands. But, you, but you're a king. Kings don't work with shovels. Kings work with words. Don't forget how God designed you divinely to operate as a person, as a being, as a, as a person in an earth suit. That's who we are. God's final creation to operate by our words. And it starts by simply saying, Jesus, I want you. Jesus, I invite you. Come into my life. Come into my life. I want everyone to stand up. Before I invite people to to receive Jesus, I want want to just pray a couple things over you. Just stand up. 
Come on, who feels the Spirit of God in, in this place? I feel the faith of God in this place. I sense the gift of faith in here. What it, come on now, when there's a manifestation of the gift of faith in the room, you can believe stuff beyond what you've studied, beyond the level of your developed faith. Come on now, now it's, now it's the time. I said, now is the time, now is the season for change. What has it been, 18, 18 years? What has it been? How long has it been? Has it been as long as that woman who, who suffered and spent and went to every expert to try and get better, but she grew worse? What, what have you been working on in your own strength? You can't do it. You've got to come to the realization like Daniel. I can't do this. I can't reform a nation. I can't fulfill my, the call upon my life. These are not the days of Elijah. These are the days of me. You know, I, I can't, but I can't get it done in my own strength, working with my hands, picking up a shovel every day and trying to figure this out. No, I, I, I've got to work with my words. And I'm telling you, it's going to turn. I'm telling you, you start working on your life with your mouth and things will start coming into your life. Who believes it's going to turn? Instead of the wrong things knocking on your door, delivering some random stuff that you never ordered, wanted to order, but it came anyway, but you actually did order it with your mouth. Some people, are, you know, they're getting what they, what they want. You know, people get what they want, but they don't want what they get because the enemy has deceived people. It's all right. That relationship's fine. Yeah, go to that club. Go, go, you know, go and mess around with those drugs or those individuals. I'm telling you, the enemy wants to get you in. He wants to get you in a pit where, where there's nothing. Now is the time to empty your cup and let him fill you up. What do you want about? Simply saying, here's my life. I'm a container. I empty myself for my self-effort, self-righteousness, trying to do life my own way, and I yield to you. King of the ages, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I call upon you, Father God, I, I believe you did send your son for me. He died so that I may live eternally. I do believe he came and became a man. I do believe he walked the streets of Jerusalem. He, he came on earth to die the death that I should have, I should have, I, I should have paid. But Jesus took my place. I believe, God, that you sent your son to die for me so I could live, so I could be forgiven. Everyone has to come to that place where they say, do you know what? I believe that. Since I believe it, I, I say it out of my mouth. Jesus, come into my life. Make a triumphant entrance. Evict everything that, the, that life and the enemy has put in my life. If you want forgiveness that can only come through Jesus, if you want life, life and life more abundant, after the count of three, I'm going to ask you to lift up your hand bold. I'm going to say one, two, three. I'm going to ask you, lift it up high, and we're going to pray a prayer. I'm telling you, life is going to be completely different. He'll come in. All of heaven will rejoice. We'll rejoice with you. We'll rejoice with you. Change. So after three, you want to be, you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. One, two, three. Just lift up your hand real high and I'll see it. Lift up your hand. If that's you in this place. Come on, anyone in this place. Hallelujah, Lord. You want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I see, I see, I see that hand. Awesome. Come on, somebody. Come on, praise God. All of heaven rejoices. Awesome. Never to be the same again. Never to be the same again. Father, we love you. Come on, just pray, church. Father, we thank you for souls surrendering to you. Jesus, you are the soon coming king. You are the king of kings, lord of lords. And you're coming soon for us. We love you. We pray, Father, that this church would be a harvesting barn of souls. The Lord, this church would engage in real Christianity, and that is seeing people come into your kingdom. 
one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Branded on our hearts. Do something to every person in this place, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everyone, under the sound of my, my voice, for those who lifted their hand, those who wanted to lift their hand, just say this after me. Father God, just say it boldly. Father God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for me. I receive Jesus as my Savior. But I also invite Him as my Lord. I believe in my heart. And therefore I confess with my mouth, Jesus is the Son of God sent to save me. And I boldly confess, Jesus, you're my Savior. You're my Lord. I invite you to come in and in my own way I say thank you for saving me thank you for making me born again thank you for redeeming me thank you for setting me on high coming in your own way church thank you Father we thank you we praise you we love you Father I thank you for your supernatural aid on every person in this room who needs turning a turn around father thank you for your strength your grace your ability on theirs to do beyond what they could ever do with their own hands help us holy spirit work with our mouth as we are kings made kings on this earth father i thank you i'm looking at a bunch of people who are ruling and reigning in life because of the abundance of grace come on team we're going to sing because of the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, we reign as kings because of King Jesus. Come on out. Who isn't dead, he is alive, and his rulership reigns forever and ever and ever. Amen.